Today's lesson is about double replacement reactions. And we're going to predict, write, out of balance chemical reaction, as well as complete ionic, net ionic, and we're going to do a micro scale illustration so we can see what's happening to the particles on a microscopic scale. So let's go and start off with our example. Our example is nickel 2 nitrate and sodium carbonate solutions mixed together. So the first thing I want to do is, um, what I would do is figure out all the ions that are in that um, each of those ionic compounds. Again, ionic compounds are made up of metal and nonmetals, metal and nonmetals. So these are solutions of those ionic compounds. So start off by kind of writing out all the ions. So this is nickel two plus. This is nitrate. This is sodium ion, looks like this. And then carbonate ion. I haven't balanced or I haven't neutralized these compounds yet and formed those compounds. I will do that when we get to the balance equation. So if, how do I know this is a double replacement reaction? So here you see two, cat, uh, two compounds, two ionic compounds. And those ionic compounds have ions that could possibly switch places. These are cations and they might switch, or you can also switch the anions if you so choose to, okay? So we can identify that these are, this is a double replacement reaction because you see two compounds possibly switching places and forming some driving force of some sort. So now as I write these substances out, um, I want to remind you that the driving forces that we have gone over in class are the formation of a solid, so formation of a liquid, uh, formation of a gas, as well as light production or heat, heat um, either coming or increasing or decreasing. So nickel 2 nitrate looks like this. And then the state of matter, as you see the word solutions, suggests that it's dissolved in water. So now we go to the second substance. The second reactant is sodium carbonate. And sodium carbonate, when it's balanced, needs two sodiums to every carbonate ion. So two sodiums to every carbonate ion. And once again, it is a solution, thus the plural form of the word solution. Or solution. So now we go to the products. Um, so I like writing these ions out so that I know how to neutralize the newly formed compounds. So when I switch these two ions, I then can figure out what the neutral substance, the new fo newly formed ionic compound, and the formula for that newly formed uh, ionic, ionic compound. So it looks like this balances out nicely, so nickel to carbonate looks like this. And I don't know the states of matter just yet, so I'm going to um, figure that out using the solubility table. And then I'm going to write out the next formula, which is nickel combined with nitrate. Notice the charges ba uh, neutralize themselves really nicely. They're electrically neutral with one of each. And once again, I'll check the solubility table for the solubility of the, those two newly formed ionic compounds. And so that's why, if you look at your pink sheet, that's why it says right here, common ionic compounds in water at 25 degrees Celsius. So I have to look at these two compounds, nickel 2 carbonate, as well as sodium nitrate. So nickel 2 carbonate, nickel 2 plus is right here and carbonates right here, and I match them up and I see that it's insoluble. So I means insoluble. Anytime I have something insoluble, that means it won't dissolve, so it stays as a solid. Something slightly soluble will be a solid, and then something soluble, an ionic compound formed, that's soluble is aqueous. So I designate this substance as my solid, because this is my precipitate, okay? And that's my driving force for this reaction so far. There could be another driving force depending on the solubility of sodium nitrate. Once again, I look at this chart 
and I see that sodium nitrate, now notice the alkali metals tend to be very soluble. Alkali metals tend to be very soluble most of the time, okay? And so sodium nitrate, if you look at that, is soluble. So S means soluble, I designate it as aqueous. So AQ, that means this will be, this ionic compound will be dissolved in solution as ions. This ionic compound will maintain to be together as a precipitate, a solid. So now I'm ready for the complete ionic, re or um, I'm sorry, I need to balance this equation. Always have a balanced equation before you move on to the next complete ionic or net ionic steps. So now we have two nitrates and I see one nitrate here, so I put a coefficient of two. And that will affect sodium, so there's two sodiums, and it looks like there's two sodiums here. Nickel looks balanced. Carbonate also looks balanced as a full ion. So we're ready to now proceed to, and that means there's one coefficient, so we're ready now to proceed to the complete ionic equation. In the complete ionic equation, what I need to do is look at the states of matter and see what I basically ionize, and thus the word complete ionic, or dissociate. So it looks like this is aqueous, that means it's dissolved, which means I'm gonna have to ion or break this apart and dissociate it into the ions that make up that substance. And the two ions, and that's why I like putting this, starting off with this, with the, the different various ions that make up these compounds, initially, because when I split it up, I can still maintain those ions and the charges. Now I have two nitrates. The way I represent two nitrate ions is this. I do not leave it as NO3 parentheses two minus. That's an ion that we've never seen before, but we have seen two nitrate ions. So now we, when we just break apart this ionic compound because it's aqueous, we then have two sodium ions, and we also have one carbonate ion. So you form the product. The product is a solid, and so we don't dissociate that substance. Solids are insoluble, so they stay together. And then the next substance is aqueous, so I dissociate this substance. Now notice there's two of them, so how many ions of each will be formed when they dissociate? Well, two sodium ions and two nitrate ions. Notice I have charges in all the substances that actually broke, it, broke apart from the, their original ionic compounds. At this point, then we will um, figure out what is involved in the chemical change and what is not involved in the chemical change. The substance that are the substances that are not involved in the chemical change is called a spectator ion. And spectator ions look exactly as they were in the products. So you have to scroll through and see what you see in the products and whether you have an exact match. Those are called spectator ions. They're non-participants in the reaction. Just like spectators out in the field, they're not participating in the game. So nickel two plus, I look over here, I see nickel, but it's not nickel two plus. So it's not a spectator ion. Two nitrate, I look over here and I see there's two nitrate, which means that's a spectator ion. I cancel that out. I look over here, there's two sodiums, two sodiums. Cancel that out. And then the carbonate ion, which I see in the precipitate, but it's not separated as an ion. And so it doesn't look precise, exactly alike here, even though one is inside the ionic compound versus one that's dissolved. So now what I will notice in the net, the net is just rewriting everything that's left over. So nickel two plus, but since it's a dissolved ion, I have to put it as an aqueous state of matter. And also, carbonate is also aqueous, forming my precipitate. And now, I hope you notice that this is your driving force, and these are all the ions that make up that driving force. And so what you have in the net ionic equation is all the species involved in the chemical change, and that's why it's called the net. Once all the spectator ions are completely uh, eliminated, 
you now have all the species or all the ions that make that ionic compound, that precipitate. So now we're ready to do, and it should always balance, by the way. So if there were two, if there was a subscript of two, there should be two nickel two plus. But there's none, so there's one of each of those ions, thus you see one of each of those ions. Now we're ready to do what is called the microscale illustration. In the microscale illustration, we're going to put each of our reactants, both nickel two nitrate as well as sodium carbonate in each of these beakers, because they usually start off separate. And then we're gonna pour them together into a one beaker, and that's where the products will be. So let's look at the first one. And what I use to guide myself through is the complete ionic. So I look at the complete ionic for the reactants, the reactant number one, which is right here, and it's nickel two nitrate. And I see that there is one nickel two plus and, and two nitrate ions. So those are the two ions in that solution. Reactant two is sodium carbonate. And if you notice in the complete ionic, that's what sodium carbonate looks like. It's made up of two Na plus and a carbonate ion. Okay. So now we then look at the product. The product side, we should see a precipitate. And notice I'll put the precipitate, precipitate on the very bottom because it's insoluble. This is our solid PPT. All the other ions will be on top. So what other ions? There's two sodiums, two sodiums, sodium ions, and two nitrate ions. And this is all in solution. So this is all in solution. Imagine water all surrounding this, okay? Now, Notice uh, this is a representation, a visual of seeing what is your spectator ions and what is your precipitate that comes out of that solution. This is literally what will happen in your last final product beaker or um, beaker. And so that um, now concludes it. However, I want to mention one more thing. If you look at nickel two carbonate and you look at your pink sheet, nickel two is a metal cation that has a specific color associated with it. And so if you look closely, this is nickel two right here, and the color associated with anything that has that ion is green. So since this is nickel two, and so you're gonna see that this precipitate is a green precipitate. Um, and that's because it has this ion right here, this nickel two, and that nickel two makes it the green color that you will notice out of that precipitate. The solution should be, for the most part, clear um, in terms of the, the coloring, but the nickel two carbonate will be your green precipitate. Um, please let me know if you have any questions in class. Um, this concludes it. Bye-bye.